Hello and welcome to another Precision Flyer Repairs video. This is part two on Gilbert American Flyer diesel sound systems with diesel roar and diesel horn. What you're looking at is the chassis of a Northern Pacific B unit number 491. It's the same one as was shown in part one of this series when it was still equipped with only its original speaker, capacitor, resistor, roar unit, etc. and not in functioning condition. I took it from there and practiced some diagnosis on it and troubleshooting until I arrived at what all was wrong with it and built it up from there to now what is a great sounding and fun to use diesel roar and horn equipped B unit from the 1950s. And what I thought I'd do is before powering it up and trying to talk over the diesel roar and horn, just explain some of the things that I discovered and what I did to get it to this operating condition again. First of all, the speaker was burnt out. The original brown paper, smaller diameter speaker no longer worked. The original capacitor, which has now been replaced by this modern unit, also had lost its ability to serve as a capacitor. The resistor, however, 10 ohm resistor shown here, is still working fine and no need to replace it. So the speaker is an AC Gilbert speaker and it's a larger one. Uh, I find a little more robust. Um, particularly against the duty load of having the uh, diesel roar on all the time as compared to the little smaller diameter brown paper uh, face speakers. There are aftermarket or reproduction speakers available for Gilbert train sound systems and many of them are sufficient to work well, particularly when there's only an air chime whistle or diesel horn but um, when you have the diesel roar on all the time and then overlay on top of that uh, the horn, you really need to trial and error with different speakers, I would suggest, and capacitors and resistors until you get the sound production that you're looking for. In this particular case, this unit is a bit special in that it's my customer's 491, but Prior to that, it was his father's, and his father is in the process of passing on to him some of his favorite and beloved American Fire trains, this and its sister, 493 and 491, among those. And he requested that I do everything I can to get them to function well and be as authentic to how they would have been made in the 50s as possible. And so I, I kind of sprung for it here by um, using one of these original three post Gilbert speakers that were um, used by Gilbert as well as the smaller brown paper one that it originally had but failed. So as part of the process um, you can test these components but I've also found that some of it is trial and error. You pretty much have to take um, a component out and try it with a known one that you um, are sure works and try to isolate where the issues are. Uh, one thing you want to start with is, is it wired correctly? The wiring scheme for this one having three points of connection on the speaker is slightly different than, for example, the original one, which had a speaker with only two posts. So it's interesting that even after I got the speaker replaced, the capacitor replaced, and found that the resistor was working fine, the tonal quality of the diesel roar was annoying. It was a very high frequency uh, almost buzz rather than an engine rumble. And what I found was the points inside this part of the diesel roar, there's an upper set and a lower set of contact points, um, were not adjusted correctly and creating a very high frequency output from them. So I adjusted those points and lowered the frequency of the diesel roar sound emitted out of the speaker such that when uh, the bell was activated, the um, horn, I'm sorry, when the horn was actuated, the horn 
was audible over the diesel roar. Before I adjusted these points, the diesel roar was so much like a buzz, a high frequency buzz, that when you activated the diesel horn, you couldn't hear the horn. It was being drowned out. So it was replace the speaker, adjust the wiring, replace bad wires with new super flexi wire, replace the capacitor with a new modern functional unit, test and keep the old resistor, and adjust the diesel roar points, as well, of course, polish the wheels and make sure the rail head contact and everything is very positive. And these joints above the trucks are renewed with fresh solder. Uh, one thing before I turn it on and let you hear it that you need to be aware of with these units is because the diesel roar runs continuously, unless you have a unit with an on-off switch, as I uh, mentioned in part one, uh, this resistor is constantly receiving current and it will get hot. And in turn, because it conducts through its lead to the body of the speaker, this speaker will heat up as well. So you want to be really sure to keep all your wires away from this speaker and away from that resistor. This looks as though it's draped over this resistor. Actually, that wire is considerably in front of, closer to the camera than the resistor. And you'll see there's air underneath the resistor and there'll be air between the resistor and the shell. So it's very important to keep that adequate clearance maintained with everything around it because these could get hot enough to melt the insulation off a wire or damage the shell of um, the, uh, the engine. So without any further ado, let's hear what this sounds like now. There, as you can tell, is the diesel roar. It's being emitted out of this speaker. And you can see the uh, first set of points and the initial contact set of points sparking. They do that on all of them, but it's actually flexing down and hitting the second point and then being pulled back up to the top. You can hear that it has a nice rumble sound to it. Previously, that was a kind of a high-pitched, annoying, constant buzzing noise. And here's what it sounds like with the horn. And so there you go. I think we've got ourselves a renewed and fully functioning diesel roar and horn equipped American Fire Gilbert 491 Northern Pacific B unit. So I hope you've enjoyed a little bit of the experience of um, my having repaired this one and learned some things from it. Until we meet again, be well and have fun running your trains.